Hey everyone, so uh, this is the file that we worked with in the previous video and um, I told you that in this video we are going to be looking at the do while loop but before I do that uh, I want to prove a point that I made that the for loop and the while loop are uh, exactly identical behind the scenes so uh, to do so I've actually created two files here one is called for loop.c and the other one is called while loop.c and here I'm going to write a for loop so uh, let's just write for int i equals 0 and uh, as you can see what I've done here is uh, I actually uh, did the declaration of the variable here itself and I'm totally allowed to do that uh, the only condition here is now uh, that the scope of this uh, variable is limited to this for loop uh, what that means is that uh, if I try to use this variable i outside of this for loop um, I'll get an error so uh, let's just go ahead and say i is less than 10 and i plus plus and I'm going to do a printf hello here so uh, this is my for loop file and in this file I'm going to do the same thing with a while loop so I do a while um, i less than 10 um, I do a printf um, hello and then I do an i++ so these two loops are now exactly the same um, and what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to do uh, I'm going to try and get the assembly code for both of them so I do a gcc dash s for loop dot c uh, dash o for loop dot s and uh, that created my uh, assembly code for the for loop and let's just go ahead and do the same for my while loop so I've got both of these files now let's uh, open them up this is my for loop and this is my while loop and um, although this is actually uh, not so easy to understand but uh, look at this I'm actually switching between these two files and there's absolutely no change here except for uh, the file name here and uh, you can check the number of lines as well it's uh, 35 lines here and it's 35 lines here as well and there's uh, absolutely no change here and uh, just to prove that there's actually no change I'm going to use the diff command and I say for loop dot s and I say while loop dot s and as you can see the only difference that I've got here is that uh, the file name in one of them is for loop dot c and the file name in another one is while loop dot c so uh, that actually proves my point that behind the scenes a for loop and a while loop are exactly the same uh, there's absolutely no difference in uh, performance speed or anything so uh, that's just something that I wanted to point out now let's get to uh, a do while loop and uh, these two loops that we've already seen are known as uh, entry control loops that's because uh, the entry into these loops itself is uh, controlled uh, what that means is let's just say I had i equals 10 here and I did a while um, sorry while i less than 10 and even if I do write something here it won't be executed at all because uh, i is equal to 10 and 10 less than 10 is not true so the entry into this loop is controlled and the same with the for loop if I do something like for int j equals 10 j less than 10 uh, j plus plus whatever I write in the body of the for loop is not going to matter because uh, again 10 less than 10 is not true and it's going to check this condition before it enters the loop at all so uh, another kind of a loop is the do while loop uh, that's not an entry control loop and uh, let's just do something interesting here um, I'll declare a character um, I'll make a char c and what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to write a do while loop and the syntax to do so is I write a do um, and within braces I write the body of the do while loop and then I write a while and I give a condition here and I need a semicolon here uh, don't forget that so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to say uh, printf um, do you like C programming and the answer again needs to be a Y or an N and let's just do a backslash N here and a scanf here which actually reads the character um, and ampersand here and I keep doing this until um, I get a yes so I just write a while C is not equal to Y so uh, what this means is that it's going to do this once irrespective of uh, what C is and then um, just to prove this actually let me just set this to Y and then it'll ask do you like C programming and if I say um, anything other than yes if I let's say say no I enter an N there so it checks this condition uh, is this condition true so n less n not equal to y is true so it's going to keep doing this until it's true so let's just go ahead and um, let's just clear this first and we'll do a gcc loop control dot c and here as you can see, even though uh, C was equal to Y for the first time, uh, it still entered this loop. So uh, that's not an entry control loop. So the entry into this loop body is not controlled. Um, it's going to execute once irrespective of uh, whatever the state is of different variables, whatever the condition you give. It is going to execute once, that's for sure. So let's just enter an N here. Um, it again just says, do you like C programming? And I can keep doing this. <laughs> but if I hit a Y, uh, it actually stops the program. So uh, that's how it works. And uh, if you're wondering why this came uh, twice every time, it's uh, probably because uh, I'm hitting enter. So uh, it actually takes that new line as a char character as well. Um, so that's why it's coming up twice. Um, but anyways, that's about the do while loop. And uh, do while is fundamentally different from the while and the for loops. So uh, it's often actually used for uh, user input. But there may be other cases where uh, you actually use the do while loop. So there's one final thing that I want to talk about uh, before we finish off loop control. Um, so let's say I want to print um, all numbers from 1 to 10. Um, I could do something like this um, for int i equals 0, actually i equals 1, um, i less than 11 and i plus plus and I just have to do a printf. Um, D backslash n and i and uh, this is how we would print all numbers from 1 to 10 but let's say I told you that I don't want you to print uh, let's say the number 5 and of course you can do it by just saying that um, if um, i is not equals 5 sorry i is not equals 5 um, only then uh, print but uh, what I want to show you is something um, slightly different. So what I can write here is uh, I just check if i equals 5. And in this case, um, what I want to do is I want to skip the rest of the loop and I want to go to the next iteration. So uh, what I write here is um, a continue. So what a continue means is that uh, the rest of the statements within the body of the loop are skipped 
but it actually goes to the next iteration. So what happens here is that when i is 1, uh, this condition right here is false. So it goes ahead and uh, prints i. But when i becomes 5, this condition becomes true. It encounters a continue statement and it just directly goes here and does an i++. plus plus. So i becomes 6 and then it comes back. This condition is false again. So it prints i. So that's how it works. And let me just show this to you once. Um, let's just do this. And loop control. And as you can see, it prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So uh, the result is as we expected. Um, so this may be useful when uh, you don't know what um, the contents of uh, a list are, let's say, and uh, you don't want to print uh, a zero. So you just skip all the zeros. Of course, you could have done uh, a not equals five and then print. But uh, whatever, um, this is actually something that um, comes in handy sometimes. So that's one thing. And another thing is uh, the break statement. And we've on already seen the break statement in the switch case uh, scenario. And what the break statement does it, is it just gets out of the loop. So let me just write something here. Um, loop finished. And um, what happens now is when I becomes 5, um, it actually encounters a break statement and it just ends the for loop altogether. It says that this for loop is now done. Let's just go to the statement after the for loop, which is this one. And it says loop finished. So um, let's just try running this. And as you can see, it prints one, two, three, four, and then loop finished. So uh, this break statement is again very useful um, because let's say you're searching for something. Uh, what you would do is uh, take a list, take a set of numbers and whatever you're searching for, you would compare it to every element in that list. And um, once you find it, you don't need to keep continuing the loop. Um, so you don't need to look at the elements after that in the list. So you can just end the for, uh, end the loop there itself. So you can use a break there. And uh, both of these continue and break can be used uh, with a for loop or a while loop or uh, a do while loop, whichever. Um, one thing that you should actually remember is uh, in a while loop, if you use a continue, uh, let me just comment this out and uncomment this. So uh, if I actually had a continue here, um, let's say I do the same thing. If I equal equals five, then uh, continue. So um, th this is now going to be a problem because a continue means uh, skip to the next iteration of the loop. And in the for loop, it was fine because skipping to the next iteration automatically means going here and incrementing. But in a while loop, it's going to skip this statement. So uh, it's just going to remain 5 forever. Um, i is never going to be incremented. So uh, whenever you're using a continue, make sure you actually uh, add an increment before it and only then add the continue. So this will now work fine. Uh, let me just show it to you. Um, all right, I haven't declared i. So let i equals 1 and let's just do this now and as you can see it prints 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is as expected. So uh, these continue and break were the last ones that I wanted to take up that um, gets us to the end of loop control. I hope uh, these videos help you understand loops better. And I'll see you next time.